A web show about professional gaming high school is now a thing. Today we tackle video game high school. Let's begin with our premise. One day, young Brian decides to play Call of Duty. <laughs> Whoops, sorry, I mean Field of Fire. In the middle of the game, he has to go away to let the cat out, leaving his player character doing nothing. Little does he know, Amateur Gamer of the Year, The Law, decides to join the match. The Law is great at gaming, so he obviously wipes everybody out. Then he comes across Brian's character. Realizing that Brian is away, he decides to mess with said character. Brian quickly comes back and in a fluke wins a match. Given that he beat a pro gamer, he is now all over the news, and I must ask... Why? Look, I know in this world professional gaming is a sport, so they're treating this pro gamer like a celebrity, and that's fine, but in real life, professional gaming is a sport. In Korea. If anyone keeps up with teams in Korea, they would know when a big name gets beaten, they... Oh, I don't know, they just get beaten. People lose matches, even the pros. It happens. It shouldn't be a big, huge deal, and yet here it is. Also, please don't give me that he's never been defeated before crap, because that's impossible. Nobody's perfect, and being undefeated would imply that. So anyways, because this is a huge deal, Brian gets a scholarship to VGHS, aka Video Game High School. Yeah, this show's premise is set up on a fluke. These are the most annoying kind of premises, and I can't stand them. The problem with premises like this is that they don't bother to showcase why a character is special or why we need to be rooting for them. It sets up that the character was only special because they were in the right place in the right time, and that itself isn't very enjoyable to watch. But I'm not going to say a show is automatically bad because of its premise, however. You guys know this. There's more factors that go into a show than that. So let's look at them beginning with characters. First, we have our protagonist, Brian D. Brian is just your everyday underdog. There's nothing unique about him as a character. He fits the standard formula. He's treated negatively and not taken seriously at school in the beginning, and we're supposed to feel bad for him. But honestly, he got in on a fluke. There is no good reason to take him seriously. Honestly, there's not. In the beginning, we're given no reason. Granted, later on it will be shown that he's slightly above average, which makes me wonder why he had to get in on a fluke. But in the beginning, people are justified in treating him this way. Even though, as always, the show says otherwise. Next, we have the energetic best friend known as Ted. He's happy, energetic, and Brian's best friend. Also, he has daddy issues. Not much more to say beyond that point, I'm afraid. Then there's Rhea and Jenny. Rhea, in the beginning, is girl and nice, and that's the extent of her character. But as time progresses, she develops a technical personality and develops an interest in school. And I sigh because I've also seen this character a million times before. Jenny is the gamer girl stereotype of the show, and there's not much more to her beyond that. Law is a stereotype as well, and his role being the extent of unfleshed out bad guy. Again, no cliches we've ever seen before. These characters aren't very deep. There's not much to them beyond basic traits. They are well betrayed, and the actors can actually act, but besides that, there's no reason to be invested in them. The show's basic setup is that Brian can't catch a break. Law is consistently out to get him, and he's consistently humiliated. I'm fine with underdog characters, but he's usually the underdog in every single situation he is. I know I shouldn't talk about being mean-spirited on my show, but in all honesty, this show is, and very especially towards Brian. The plot never really goes beyond Law trying to make Brian's life a nightmare, and that's it. It's a cookie-cutter plot. Law is also a cookie-cutter bad guy. There's nothing special about him besides having a quick wit and being a bully, if you can even call that special that, again, we've seen this character a million times portrayed by a million different actors. This actor's performance does not stick out. Video Game High School has interesting concepts and interesting ideas, but it doesn't do anything with them. A world where Americans compete in professional gaming. Great. We never see it go beyond the school. World with slightly futuristic tech. Great. We never see it go anywhere. A world where we see live action portrayals of games. We never see anything besides Call of Duty. It's an interesting show worth noting, but in all honesty, there's nothing to catch your eye. On the plus side, however, the special effects are incredibly impressive. Usually with web shows, I don't expect great effects. I expect poor quality. I usually give web shows a pass here as long as I can tell that effort was given. This is because web shows don't have large budgets and can't afford good effects. But the thing with Freddie Wong's work, he's the guy who did the special effects for the show, is that the effects are always brilliant. I've yet to see a Freddie Wong video where the effects don't look how intended and aren't amazing. The quality of the actual video is nice as well. They film on location, which I give the show a thumbs up for. The script works, which is more than I can say for most web shows. Did I mention the actors could act? I know, it's amazing. Most web shows actors can't act, so I'm glad to see actors who portray their characters well. It also has ethnic diversity, which, again, is another plus. But with everything being said, will it keep your attention? Some of the time, it will. 
The focus isn't always where it should be, and I think that may be a part of it. Again, with all this being said, is the show bad? It's mediocre. At first I thought it was okay for what it was, but honestly when it comes down to it, I've seen this story a million times and there's nothing special here. But before I go out, I'm gonna give you a little PSA. A lot of the episodes in this web show are subtitled. Subtitles in your YouTube videos, in my opinion, are important. If you don't subtitle your video, you're already losing a potential audience. What do I mean by this? Well, let's say someone who's deaf comes across your video, review, web show, or whatever. Well, they're not going to be able to enjoy it. If you don't subtitle your videos, then you're automatically isolating out a potential audience, subscriber, and audience member. So yes, I'm very appreciative of subtitles. I know there's no real reason to say this in this video, but I've been meaning to say it, so I'm going to say it here. Next week we tackle American Zombies. Great.